gatherers, also known as food foragers, gather edible plants and animals from the environment. Seasonal fluctuations determine the schedule for hunting and gathering of available resources. Social groups in semi-arid landscapes tend to live in small, highly mobile groups of 25 to 30 individuals, moving frequently between residences and traveling long distances. Because they travel long distances, the hunter-gatherers do not keep many personal belongings. Between 6,000 and 3,200 years before present, archaic hunter-gatherers lived, traveled, and worked in the Chihuahuan Desert in the Lower Pegas region of Texas. This region is located along the northeastern portion of the Chihuahuan Desert at the southwestern edge of the Edwards Plateau. The Lower Pecos encompasses a portion of both northern Mexico and southwestern Texas. The Rio Grande, the Devils, and the Pecos River transect the rough, rocky, dry terrain. Along with the Rio Grande, the Devils, and the Pecos River, natural springs flow, occurring where aquifers or underground rivers, saturate the surrounding porous limestone, allowing water to move to the surface, mostly along the Balcones fault line. One of the largest springs in Texas, Good Enough Springs, lies beneath the Amistad Reservoir within a Rio Grande side canyon. The rivers and springs provide water resources to the semi-arid region. Archaeological evidence shows that the archaic hunter-gatherers hunted using atlatls to throw long spears or darts with greater velocity. Animals in the hunter-gatherers' diet include mice, rabbits, a variety of fish, snakes, lizards, and white-tailed deer. Some of the plants they ate include prickly pear fruit, walnuts, mesquite, lechuguilla bulbs, soto bulbs, and yucca. The archaic hunter-gatherers chose to live in some rock shelters, or they built temporary shelters called wikiups, within a walking distance to rock shelters. Today, circles of limestone boulders are all that remain of the wikiups. The archaic hunter-gatherers knew the landscape intimately. They knew the hidden dangers such as poisonous insects or snakes. These hunter-gatherers also knew that a calm, dry canyon could quickly become inundated with rushing, raging waters. In this unpredictable physical landscape, the archaic hunter-gatherers lived and they painted on the sheltered walls. Rock art refers to parietal, or wall art, images on a large, heavy surface that cannot be carried from place to place, such as boulders, cliff faces, or rock shelter walls. Petroglyphs are etched, carved, or pecked images, and pictographs are painted images. There are four pictographic styles present in the Lower Pegasus region. There's the red monochrome, the red linear, the historic, and the Pecos River style. 
This research focuses on the Pecos River style pictographs, which consist of large, polychromatic, or multicolored images. <laughs> hunter-gatherers in the archaic time period painted the Pecos River-style pictographs because they used an organic material to bind the pigment. Organic material contains carbon, and carbon is datable. Scientists used accelerator mass spectrometry, or AMS, to radiocarbon date the Pecos River-style paint. The radiocarbon dates place the Pecos River-style pictographs between 4200 and 2950 years before present, the Middle Archaic period. Arrow point is a diagnostic tool of the Middle Archaic, dating between 4,000 and 2,500 years before present. Additional arrow points dated to the Middle Archaic include the Langtree Point and Valverde Point. All three arrow points have been excavated in shelters where the Pegasus River style pictographs are found. The archaic hunter-gatherers painted the shelter walls for a variety of reasons related to shamanic practices, such as hunting magic to ensure the success of a hunt or hunter, healing rituals, and recording a trance experience. The archaic hunter-gatherers painted images on top of images called superimpositioning. They incorporated parts of the shelter wall, such as cracks, holes, or nodules, into their paintings, and the acoustics of the shelters amplify sound and create echoes. Shaman comes from the Tungus people of central Siberia, and shamanism refers to a type of religion practiced by a group that contacts guardian spirits and helpers through trance. Rock art created by a shamanic group will have a limited range in species since the species are available to a large group of people, and the rock art will be found in habitation sites or in shelters near habitation sites spread over a large area. The word totem comes from the Ojibwe of North America. Anthropologists use the term totemism to refer to a clan lineage system 
where the group uses animals or plants as guardians or emblems of a social group. Each group is identified by a different species, to identify one group among many groups. Generally, rock art created by totemic groups will display many different species in high frequency on boulders, cliff faces, or shelter walls, and often mark pilgrimage trails or territory boundaries. My research of the Pecos River style pictographs found that the archaic hunter-gatherers painted a limited number of species such as deer, feline, and canine. They painted the Pecos River style imagery in rock shelters that they used as habitation sites or close to habitation sites. Additionally, the rock art sites are near water sources that support natural resources for food foraging. <laughs> Rock shelters are distributed over a large area, and archaeological evidence shows that archaic hunter-gatherers repainted images over a great span of time, suggesting the same group or related groups reoccupied the area. Characteristics of shamanic practice found in the Pecos River style pictographs are 1. The power of magical flight, 2. The ability to assume the form of or transform into an animal familiar, and 3. The concept of a parallel supernatural or natural worlds. The Pecos River style imagery also includes the presence of large composite figures of human and animal characteristics, a distinctive aspect of shamanic practice. The placement of the Pecos River style pictographs on the landscape and the imagery shows that the archaic hunter-gatherers of the Lower Pecos practiced shamanism. is an extremely fragile cultural resource that cannot be replaced. Many sites are significant culturally and religiously for many people today. Today, people continue to admire, respect, and research the pictographs in the Lower Pecos.